A few months ago, me and my friends were trying to find a game to play together that we could all actually enjoy. All of us have very different ideas of what makes a game good, so finding some form of middle ground is always going to be difficult. That's when the suggestion of Monster Hunter World came up. Now I'd played this game before, only for around 3 or 4 hours, and if I'm being honest, I really didn't like it. I'd seen so many people put so many hours into it, and I thought there's got to be something for this game to have been so successful. Maybe it's just that I hadn't played it right. So we all agreed that maybe playing Monster Hunter World would be a good idea. At least something to try. So once a week, we all jumped on a call and we played it for a short while. We were only really playing for around 3 or 4 hours a week so there was no real progress going on, and the game did still seem incredibly slow. We stuck with it for a while to try and see what more could happen. To be clear, this isn't exactly a review of the game. This is more so my experience of playing through the game, less about how to kill specific monsters and more about how it was to physically go through it and all of the ups and downs that the game had for us. When it came to the early game, we did enjoy it, at least somewhat. We were recommended by our friend who had played before to use the Defender gear, because it would make it easier going forward whilst we were trying to get through the base game, and to be fair, he was completely right. However, this did put us at a massive disadvantage, which I will go on to later. The only issue that we really found is, the game is very much not designed for friends to go through it together. It's a great game to play multiplayer, and the amount of helpful people I've found in the community have been great, but when you're going through the story, it kind of sucks, because you're having to go into each quest separately to have the cutscene, and then everyone has to back out and go back in again. So it's not the end of the world, but it does seem like there's a little bit too much admin to just play with your friends. When it came to the actual monsters, they all had such interesting designs and it was honestly a lot of fun to play, because it never really felt like we were struggling with anything. We didn't pay much attention to what the monster was doing, we just kind of went in and hit it a lot. Let it die, and then left. All of us picked one weapon, and then we stuck with it. I was using longsword, one was using insect glaive, one on the hammer, and one on hunting horn. So we had a nice array of weapons to choose from whilst we slowly made our way through the game. Then the issue arose. None of us had been doing any of the things that we were supposed to have been doing. No one was using tail riders, we were barely eating, we didn't know what we should have been picking up on quests, and more importantly, none of us were doing any of the optional quests to receive any benefits from having them. To this day, I'm still really confused by mantles and how I actually managed to get half of them. We all went our separate ways to try and work out which optionals we needed to do and what we needed to grind to make the potions and stuff that we actually needed to carry on with the game, which was when the game became a little bit more tedious. I've never really been a fan of games that require huge amounts of grind, especially in a game where each quest can take as long as 50 minutes. Luckily with the Defender gear it really wasn't that long so we were slightly thankful. By the time we'd made it through all of the low rank quests, I think all of us were just a little bit burnt out. The game wasn't really that difficult, it just felt like it was more of a grind than anything else, which for most of us was just incredibly boring. Luckily that's when the fights did start to get a little bit harder. Still using the defender gear meant that we were still doing enough damage, but now we had to actually start learning what the monsters were doing to try and avoid dying almost constantly. Going through high rank was fun, pretty much the entire way through. That's when we started learning about actually upgrading our equipment. We learnt about the botanists, so we didn't have to grind for stuff to make consumables anymore, and it just became a little bit nicer for us to play. There were some fights in the game that we did honestly struggle with, but I also don't think that's a bad thing. We got stuck on two high rank quests for a few hours because we just kept getting beat, and it made us realise that we needed to try and slow things down and take this monster out the right way. I think for us, this was the first time everyone actually seemed engaged and realised that this game is actually a lot harder than we had originally thought, but we persisted and we managed to make our way all the way through to Master Rank without anyone quitting out and deciding that they just couldn't do it anymore. And then we got to the part of the game that all of us struggled with, apart from the one guy who had already played this game before. All of us collectively just felt like we'd had enough. It wasn't anyone's fault though, but our own. The problem we had was that the Defender gear just wasn't really cutting it anymore. It managed to get us through rank 1 of Master Rank Quests, but the damage we were making started going down, and the damage we were receiving was just going up, but we were stumped. We really didn't know how to make it through the game in the same way that we had been playing for the last few weeks. This is when it really hit us. One of the biggest parts of Monster Hunter is the gear, the crafting system, 
Building and creating builds, using decorations to try and win fights and actively trying to balance a build so you can do more damage and endure more attacks. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't a fault of the game, it's our fault for not really playing the game properly. But the next few weeks of us playing just became a little bit more of a slog. Everyone was unmotivated, because a game we had just put 50 hours into, we felt like we were having to relearn all over again from scratch, and it was becoming more and more tedious. Once we had all got the hang of the game, it became a little bit more enjoyable. At least for me. We managed to get to around Master Rank 3 quests before I really hit the point of just wanting to make better equipment, better weapons, so I left to go out on my own. Now up until this point, I had played almost exclusively with the same group of people, and all I was really doing were the quests. There were a few occasions where we would go and collect materials separately, or we would log on separately and do a few optional quests, but we never really moved on from that. I decided it was time I went through and finished the main story. I was more than happy to go back and still finish going through it all with them, but I was just getting more and more annoyed that everything I was seeing online about the game and all of the cool weapons, I just wasn't able to use because I couldn't get to them without finishing the story. So I went forward and I found my way struggling through the rest of the Iceborne DLC. And to be honest, it was probably some of the best times that I've had on this game. The challenge was frustrating, but it made it even more satisfying when it finally came to finishing it. And some of the fights, despite needing help, gave me a great sense of accomplishment. At this point, I got a little bit lost in myself. It doesn't happen very often, but the game became very all-consuming and it was most of what I was doing in my spare time. I decided it was time to try some new things. I finished all of the Iceborne story and made it to the point where I could do some of the special assignments, which at the time of me finishing, Kulv was in rotation. And although I couldn't do the siege, I was able to do his master rank quests. I joined a few and kept dying almost instantly. So I realised I needed to rethink what I was doing, and Longsword wasn't really working for me anymore. I found that you got weapons from the Melder from using his parts, so I started using a new weapon, the Switch Axe, and it felt like I was playing a completely different game. The monsters are all the same, sure, but I'm now having to learn to play in a completely new way, and it added another layer of excitement for me. I was going through this for quite a while, just grinding through the events and more monsters to try and get parts to build cooler armour and more weapons, until I reached a massive halt. Altreon. The elemental dragon that gave me an almighty headache for the best part of 20 hours. He was so hard to learn, but it made it all the more thrilling when I finally got to beat him. Then when Fatalis came into it, I became even more frustrated, and around 40 hours were spent learning how to beat him. If I'm being completely honest, I'll try on now I can be. Not easily, but it can be done. I've made the entire armour set and a few of the weapons, and I am happy with the progress. However, even now with Fatalis, I just can't stand him. It's a difficult fight, and I just still can't really get my head around it. But I think that's a big part of the beauty in this game. The frustration of trying to learn something so when you finally do manage it, it becomes even more satisfying. I also recently started playing Insect Glaive. Mainly because my friend was struggling with it and saying how it was very low damage, and I wanted to see how bad it really was. But at this point, it's probably my favourite weapon in the game. We started playing this game around November time. It took a good few months for us to even get into the swing of things, but then it really started picking up the pace. For me especially, over the last few months. Now we've stopped playing for a few weeks due to everyone having to go off and do their own thing. I'm still jumping on it every other day to go in and just do a few hunts. I'm not really grinding for anything, nor am I wanting to build anything more. I'm now playing simply for the reason that I want to. I feel actively involved in the fights, and I just want to get better at hunting the monsters, which is something that I never really thought that I would feel when we originally sat down to play this game. Some of the best times that I've had are just going into the guiding lands and just hunting things with random people online. It went from being a game that I was forcing myself to play so I could be social and have a better time with my friends, to a game that I'm actively enjoying and am more than willing to sit and play on my own. One other thing to add is that the community for this game, for the most part, is fantastic. I've met so many people who have managed to help me achieve something or learn something new about the game. Now it's a complex game with some mechanics that, to be honest, I still don't really understand now, but that's made easier by other people helping lessen the burden. 
Now, I usually don't really talk about games that I play with my friends that often, but this one is special for me. Monster Hunter World is the first game in the Monster Hunter series that I've ever played, and over the last few months, it's also been one of the only games that I've played. Mainly due to not having the time, or I'm fairly certain there was one day I played this game for 10 hours and just forgot to go outside. Now, I usually stop playing a game if it can't captivate me within the first few hours, because at that point, I don't really want to burn myself out over something that I'm not really enjoying. This game taught me that sometimes, persistence is one of the greatest achievements you can have in life. I know it may sound weird, because I'm really just sitting here and talking about a video game, but this is currently one of my favourite games, and I would never have gotten to enjoy it in the way that I have because of my usual rule about leaving a game when I'm bored. The level design, the sound design, and even down to the way that the cats make you meals. This game is great. There's pros and cons to every game, but this is one that I can honestly say that I am glad I've given the time of day to. My advice to anyone that is new to Monster Hunter is simply this. If you're not enjoying it, put it down and come back later. Trying it a second or third time won't do you any harm. No, the game really isn't going to be for everyone. And if you really don't like it, then that's fine. Drop it and do something else. There's always going to be games that you like and some that you don't. That's completely natural. Also, try not to use the Defender Armor. Yeah, the stats are good, and it'll speed you through the base game quite quickly, but it also takes away a big part of Monster Hunter, and when you finally start learning it, you'll find the depreciating gains to be quite deflating. Let me know what you think down below. Like the video if you've enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new, and take it easy.